Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the top 15 HVAC tips to avoid vacuum problems when trying to prepare a system for a refrigerant. So tip number one is if you have a vacuum set up uh, that's going to be able to draw the vacuum down lower, faster, then what that's going to do for you is it's going to allow you to be able to get the job done faster. It's going to allow you to have less frustrations if there is a problem with the vacuum, such as at the service valve possibly leaking at the top right here or some other issue. And we'll get into the potential for water freezing in the refrigerant lines later on in this video. Tip number two is that you do want to use valve core removal tools. So if this is your liquid service valve, you're going to have a Schrader valve inside of here. You want to be able to remove that. And in order to remove it and do your vacuum and then put it back uh, after you've released the refrigerant into the system, then you need to have a valve core removal tool and we use ones that are vacuum rated down to 20 microns. The reason that we remove the valve core out of the service port is just to make sure that there's no restrictions in the lines while pulling a vacuum. Also, once you pull that valve core out of there, you're going to read a more accurate micron level with your micron gauge. This is tip three. So you remove the valve core during the brazing process and and then you're doing the pressure testing and now you're getting ready to do the vacuum procedure so you're hooking on your valve core removal tool over here you're adding your your hose here and what I'm finding is some technicians are actually only putting one valve core removal tool on this side and putting the micron gauge on top if you're choosing to put the micron gauge over at the unit which would be uh, the most accurate then I highly recommend that you do three valve core removal tools one on the liquid line and two over here at the suction line but what people are doing is they're they're putting they're basically leaving this valve core in the top and they're putting the the gauge right here they're pulling down to 500 microns and then after that occurs they're pulling this off but what happens is during that time depending on how fast you pull this off, you are losing some of your vacuum, and that's a problem. Uh, also, if that valve core leaked during that, pro that process, then you're going to lose your vacuum as well. And then you have no idea that that occurred. You're adding refrigerant in on top of a bad vacuum or air, and that's an issue. The reason that technicians are pulling this off or are basically isolating the micron gauge ahead of time is just to make sure that it doesn't get positive pressure or refrigerant in the sensor. I never find a reason to really have a valve core in the side of my valve core removal tool, so I just leave them out on all three all the time. So this is how I set my valve core removal tools up. I make sure that the valves uh, can turn and there's no obstructions in the way. As well, during the vacuum, when we get down closer towards 500 microns, I always end up uh, turning these valves just like this in order to make sure that there's not any trapped a uh, little bit of air in the ball valve. And, and then after that, it's good. I just keep sucking down until I get to like two, 300 microns, and then I'm able to just valve these off, test the micron level for 10 minutes. After that, I isolate it by turning that valve, and then I introduce refrigerant into the system. If you want to see the full vacuum procedure, you can check out the AC Service Tech vacuum playlist, and also that is linked in the description below, along with the different tools I'm using in the video here. This is tip four. Uh, try not to use extra fittings such as a uh, valve core depressor tool or a uh, on-off valve that's only rated for positive pressure and not vacuums or also the quick disconnect heads, the ones that are larger. Uh, they could cause a leak or also cause a restriction in the line. This is tip five. If you're going to use a standard uh, refrigerant charging hose slash vacuum hose, you want to make sure that you uh, pull the valve core depressor out of the the hose tip right here. So what that's going to do is it, if you leave it in, it's going to lead to a restriction in the line and you just want to make sure that you're using this in conjunction with the valve core removal tools on the service valves with the Schrader valves removed as well. This is tip six. Try whenever possible to reduce the amount of transitions uh, and also the, the valves that are only rated for positive pressure. So like this connection right here is an extra connection and this connection, you could get this all basically in one hose without the valve or you could get one with a valve that is actually rated uh, for vacuums. So always reduce the amount of fittings uh, for potential leak sites. This is tip seven. 
when you have your grommets getting wore down over time, uh, you don't want to just keep trying to tighten this nut and trying to force a vacuum. So you just go ahead and replace them with, with new ones. I have these linked down in the description below. This is tip eight. You want to use larger diameter vacuum hoses, even if you have to reduce down when you go through a transition, such as at the valve core removal tool. Um, you could also use shorter hoses as well, such as this quarter inch by quarter inch hose. And if you are vacuuming through, say, a four port manifold gauge set, then you would use a 3 8 hose such as this. This is tip nine. Set yourself aside basically a vacuum setup that's only used for vacuums only. This way, once you pull down to say 200 microns and you know it's successful, you know it's gonna be successful every time. It's not used for refrigerant charging and, and other things like that. And you don't have to play around uh, with, with any of it. It's just real quick. And this is my vacuum setup right here. Three valve core removal tools, a micron gauge, two hoses, and a vacuum pump. This is tip 10. I know a lot of people like to attach the micron gauge right over to the manifold gauge set and then run their vacuum hose from the vacuum pump over into the manifold and then attach the two other hoses over to the valve core removal tools attached to the service valve of the outdoor unit. Uh, what I'm going to suggest is that you don't have to use the manifold gauge set in order to pull vacuums. In fact, you're potentially introducing a lot more leaking points uh, that could cost you frustration uh, while you're trying to pull down a vacuum. Because you're using, typically you're using this four port manifold for charging as well and just over time uh, they end up leaking, you know, and you have four valves here and then you have uh, multiple connection points and you're using three hoses instead of two hoses you also have your micron gauge further away from the system that you're vacuuming, so it's a little um, less accurate, but will still work. You know, a lot of people do uh, this right here that I'm showing you. I'm just suggesting for a faster vacuum, just using the three valve core removal tools, the two hoses, and micron gauge. I have had uh, manifold gauge sets leak. I also have had students uh, in the classroom have them leak. And it's just another headache that you don't want to be bothered with when you're trying to do a vacuum and you want to try to do it quickly. This is tip 11. Uh, when you get a system down in vacuum below 500 microns and you're introducing the refrigerant into the system, make sure that you valve off or isolate off the vacuum gauge because you don't want positive pressure to come into this vacuum gauge so that it would create a leak or something like that. Uh, as well, if you get refrigerant and or oil into the sensor, it may need to be cleaned. Some manufacturers suggest using rubbing alcohol to clean the sensor, but you want to make sure that you're following the particular manufacturer's instructions for cleaning the sensor. But if the sensor is dirty, it won't read the correct uh, micron level, and then you won't be able to tell if you have an effective vacuum or not. So just make sure that you clean the sensor if there is an issue. So this is tip 12, and we're referring to water potentially freezing in a system that you're dehydrating. So uh, say you valve the system off because you're at, say, you're down at, say, two, three hundred microns. So you valve it off, then you shut your vacuum pump off, and now you're waiting to see if the micron level rises, indicating a leak or that there's frozen uh, water in the lines that's now melting and uh, uh, putting pressure on the system. So um, basically, the, there's a simple way to avoid this if you really do have uh, water that was in those lines. Say, they're, say they were open completely and there's just a lot of water on the inside and they were open for a long time, now you're vacuuming them. Uh, there's a very simple way, which is to keep the evaporator fan running. So if you have an air handler or a furnace, just turn the blower motor on. You're going to be putting heat that's within the building onto the evaporator coil and if uh, you have an entire system that you're vacuuming, you could even run the condenser fan. Just make sure that you do not energize the compressor while vacuuming. That, that will absorb heat onto the refrigerant lines and avoid any, uh, any moisture from, from freezing inside the system. So that's a tip that I would, I would use for residential, like commercial systems. Um, but normally you don't really have water in the lines that could freeze. It's just in that rare instance of maybe, say, like a new construction job that somebody ran the, uh, the copper lines and just kind of left them completely open for, for a while, which would be not good at all anyway, because uh, you do have things like spiders and other things getting in there. You, you don't want to leave them open. As soon as you install a, a line set, you make sure that you close up the ends. 
uh, so that you do not have any contaminants, bugs, or anything get into that line set. As well, it'll keep it, it'll keep it dry and prepared for you to go ahead and dehydrate the system. And even if you had the evaporator fan off, you know, you're really not going to freeze water that was in the lines if there is any in the lines, uh, which typically there's not, just due to the thermal conductivity of the copper uh, surrounded by, by warm air. So that's going to not allow uh, the, any water to freeze in the system as well as the quill being exposed in a warm area as well. This is tip number 13, and I hear technicians say, hey, I got a vacuum pump or I got a used vacuum pump. Um, and, and typically when you get a used vacuum pump, you know, it may not be in the best shape and they may not have changed the uh, vacuum oil. If they did not change the vacuum oil or didn't change it a lot, it's, it's very likely that that vacuum pump will no longer even be able to suck down to 500 microns. So they've done damage to the vacuum pump by not changing the oil. So if you, if you notice that a vacuum pump just runs and runs and runs and you know your setup's good, you know, you could just have a, a bad vacuum pump at this point uh, just because the seals are all worn uh, due to it using old oil. I will tell you that even if you go to change the oil in a vacuum pump like that, it's still not going to be able to perform like it should. So make sure that you change the vacuum pump oil regularly. When this thing is sitting level, you see your oil level line, it should be right there. Uh, in order to change the oil, you have a drain valve right down the bottom, and then you have a uh, port right here, a fill port, in order to fill the vacuum pump oil up. I use this uh, JB Black Gold. Uh, I have that link down in the description below. Uh, but basically, if you were to do a uh, compressor change out on a system that had a burnout compressor, definitely change the oil right after you're done with that. Um, and remember you're getting contaminants out of the system and this is going to end up sitting in the oil. So make sure that you change the oil regularly. Uh, when this thing is sitting uh, flat on a level surface while it's running uh, or just sitting flat in general, the oil level should be halfway up the, the mark right here. Um, but uh, they'll, they'll typically let you know there'll be a line right here or something like that on the vacuum pump. And there's a drain valve at the bottom and then a fill uh, port at the top and basically you want to change that oil anytime you do a compressor change out on a burnout compressor definitely do that right away after you're done and also on just on regular jobs change it periodically just make sure that it does not turn yellow and that it doesn't turn foggy or something like that so remember if you change your oil you're gonna have a good vacuum pump you're gonna be able to use it for a long time this is tip 14 and this is a two position uh, vapor service valve but basically, if you know your, your vacuum uh, setup is good, your vacuum pump's good, and you, you positively pressure test this with nitrogen, and you, you know there's no leaks when you positively pressure test it, but then you do have some type of a leak when you are vacuuming, it could be from your actual service valve right here. So right at the top in the inside of here, there's a rubber O-ring, and that can get dry or worn out, and that could be where your leak is from. So in this case, with this all the way up, that means that you're vacuuming basically over towards the compressor and in the line set going to the evaporator coil if, if your valve was like this. Uh, and in that, in that case, uh, what you could do, you could do two things. Uh, you could uh, use your other service valve to break the vacuum uh, with refrigerant, which means that you could basically lock this one down. So you could put refrigerant oil right in here and then put this on and tighten that up and that could end up stopping the leak until you can at least get positive pressure in the system. Another thing that you could do since, since uh, there's no pressure on both sides and you could technically uh, raise and lower this service valve when it's at zero atmospheric pressure, you could end up front seating this all the way down and then you could add a little bit of refrigerant oil whether the system has mineral oil, or whether it has POE oil, you could add a little bit on the inside then you could take this all the way up and then all the way down, all the way up and all the way down. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to be getting oil on the rubber O-ring. And then you can bring it back up to your, to your uh, up high position. This wouldn't be necessarily back seated because um, when you pull this all the way up because it's a two position service valve, uh, though it would be all the way up. Uh, a lot of people refer to it as back seating and front seating. Um, but when you are back seated with this valve, all three of these are going to be connected still. Um, but anyway, when you bring this all the way up, now the rubber O-ring has oil on it and it may then seal up. So that's, that's something that you could do. On a service valve that is front seated and you have refrigerant in 
um, the outdoor unit, basically it's locked in. You want to make sure that you don't touch that until you're ready to break the vacuum with refrigerant. So in that case, the only choice that you have with trying to seal up a, a leak would be that to add some refrigerant oil onto this and then go ahead and tighten that cap down in place and then go ahead and try it again. Once you have positive pressure in it, uh, and then you, you know you don't have any leaks because that's the way it was uh, previously, you know, that's something that you could try. So this is tip 15 and uh, we made it through, right? <laughs> We're at 15 now. Um, basically, if you are getting ready to vacuum a system with an existing evaporator coil, then that existing evaporator coil likely has oil laying in the inside of it, maybe blocking one of the tubes. So if you notice that your micron gauge is just going up and down, up and down with the micron level, say like 100 or 200 microns, and that is an indication that you have a glob of oil basically in your evaporator coil and it's kind of moving back and forth like this. You want to pull a vacuum from both sides uh, of the, your, your, your system, basically both your vapor and your liquid service valves. You want to pull vacuum from both. Uh, to avoid the restriction of your metering device halfway through the system. So you don't want to pull from one side and put the vacuum gauge on the other because it's just a very inefficient way to pull a vacuum. Um, so you pull from both sides. Basically, the only thing that you need to do, you just need to do what's called an oil blowout. Uh, so if you are wondering what that is, you can go ahead and look that up. I have that as well. Just type in AC Service Tech oil blowout and you'll find that. Uh, but basically, what you're going to do is you're going to put 100 PSI of nitrogen in through this side and you're going to let it come out through this side. You're really not going to have much oil blow out, though you should put a metal catch right there, a metal can or something like that to catch. But there really shouldn't be much oil blowing out. Basically, what you are doing is you're blowing the oil onto the inner walls of the tubing in the evaporator quill, which allows the vacuum to be able to get pulled through it. And then you're not going to have any issues with your vacuum level. Um, right here, it's just going to continue to go down, and it's not going to hop around or anything like that. So... I hope some of this helped on your day-to-day, uh, -to -day. you know, if you have headaches with some of this stuff or whatever. Uh, if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech. I have all the tools and uh, supplies used in this video down in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.